We've had an excellent couple of seasons at Cambridge United and they might be, hopefully, about to get even better. Might be, hopefully. I mean, it's going to be a disaster if they aren't. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to more Careering Onwards with me, Mr. Grant 2, Cambridge United Season 2. And, well, we are on the cusp of being promoted for the second time in two years. We're on the cusp of being promoted to the Championship, which is a division that Cambridge have not been in for quite some time. As you can see from the league table, we have already qualified for the playoffs. I think that was kind of inevitable, but... If my maths is correct, we are also 15 points clear of Hull City and MK Dons in third and fourth. And what that means, very simply, with five league matches left, there is 15 points left available on the table. And with our superior goal difference over both Hull and MK Dons, I think, in practical terms, we have already gone up. But... We definitely will secure promotion if we can get ourselves one point from our remaining five matches. And then, of course, the focus becomes trying to win the League One title. We are eight points clear of Charlton, which means I think a couple of wins will seal that one. So we could do it today. So what's happened since last time? Well, Charlton have lost one of their games and they won the other two, but we won all three of ours. A 3-0 win against Shrewsbury, George Maris, two from Dennis Politic, and then 2-0 going down against Burton Albion. Adam Ider again from the penalty spot, Will Ferry getting the other one, and then a 1-0 win against Gillingham. Lloyd-Jones, the only goal of the game. Adam Ider missed a penalty, but it didn't matter on this occasion. So we successfully recovered from the defeat to Fleetwood, which was disappointing, and we are looking very, very good indeed. Up today, QPR and then Peterborough, as I say, one point against either of them, and we should secure promotion. I mean, look, the game says it, one point from promotion, and the game would never lie. Before we get to that, though, briefly, we are still manager of Venezuela. I said I'd resign if we didn't beat Bolivia. Well, we did beat Bolivia. It was a 4-0 win. Great performance. We finally won a game, and then clearly the confidence was so good that we went and beat Argentina away from home as well. Absolutely fantastic and absolutely meaningless as well. We have been eliminated from World Cup qualification. We cannot make it to Venezuela's first World Cup. So, yeah, I think I think, I, I, think I might see out qualification. I don't know. I'm not going to get sacked. I would have been sacked already. The Venezuelan FA are fine with it. We'll see if any other international vacancies come up in the summer, but I think I probably will maybe just see out qualification and then hand in my notice. Jack, you could have been part of this, mate. You could have been part of this. I mean, I enjoy the MLS. Right then, QPR. We've already played them, of course, earlier on in the season. It was a very good performance and a very good win. And we just need to get a draw today. And we will be going up. The team is, as you would expect, really. We can bring Dixon Bonner back in. He, well, he's been suspended for a couple of games, of course, after he got sent off in the last episode against Fleetwood Town. We can bring him back in in place of Josh Ruffles, who's done very, very well in his absence. Otherwise, then, the team is the familiar team. Callum Burton in goal, he has been, well, he's just developing week on week. He has been really, really good this season. Really, really good. 23 clean sheets for him compared to last year where he was a bit of a liability. Very, very good indeed. Wanted by Middlesbrough and Aberdeen. And then the back four, obviously completely revamped from last year, have been sensational. Field at left back has been so good. As has Brown. He's been a little bit more inconsistent, but the centre backs, Boone, I mean, we've not really talked about Jordan Boone at all, I don't think, but just so reliable, so dependable. Occasional mistake, but nothing major. Lloyd Jones as well, marshalling the defence, very, very disciplined. Maris and Adiemi, the, the, the two sort of players that were already ours permanently who haven't been replaced. Adiemi's kind of fallen off a bit, as we've talked about, but he's not been awful. Maris has excelled at this level. Politic and Ferry on the wings have been very, very good, and Adam Ida, of course. What more can we say? 29 goals in the league for him so far, 31 in all competitions. He's got five games. Can he get, well, can he get close to 40? That would be nice. So it's going to be interesting here at Loftus Road. Can we seal promotion here today, or is it going to drag on, and are we going to potentially, potentially muck it up? I think with our goal difference, it's going to be incredibly unlikely. We're going to have to concede, well, we're going to have to concede 
I would say at least 10 goals with everyone else scoring quite highly. I hope that's not going to happen, even with five games to go. Anyway, we're coming forwards. A goal early on would settle the nerves of the travelling Cambridge faithful, a couple of thousand of them. Ida, oh, really good chance. Lovely move. He didn't convert, though. Can we try again? Ida finds Lloyd-Jones to Dixon Bonner. We're looking to work from the back. Callum Burton plays back to Jones. Politics got a bit of space. Turns, 360 turn. And uh, it's got it's got it back again. James Brown looking for some room. Finds Will Ferry, who is an absolute country mile offside. For once, I actually agree with the uh, the linesman there. And it's still nil-nil. And that is where it will be at half-time. Um, obviously, a point is fine in terms of securing promotion. That's absolutely all we need. But I would like to win it because then I think two wins and we can seal the title. Not with passes like that, though. Scowen's in. It's a wild effort from him. But, yeah, not. I mean, let's not, let's not be complacent. It's not impossible that we muck this up. It's, it's quite unlikely, but it's still not impossible. Will Ferry on the left-hand side to Dennis Politic. Goes for the header, but he doesn't find the target. 25 minutes gone. QPR coming forwards. Tom Pett beats the defence. Great run from him there. We bigged up the defence, but they weren't good on that occasion. Doesn't go in, though. And at least we're getting to the point where sort of it doesn't really matter if we get injuries because we've got such a margin. Foot injury for Tom Field. He is somewhat injury prone. He is somewhat injury prone. He's, he's going to have to go off today. We'll bring on Leon Davis for the last sort of 20 minutes or so. Can we get a goal in this one, or is it going to be... Is it going to be a nil-nil? No shots on target from QPR. Not seen much at all from them. We haven't found the target, but then we don't really need to very much. Time is ticking away. Charlton, I think, just took the lead. Did they take the lead? They did against AFC Wimbledon, um, which means we're not going to be any closer to winning the title, but we are closer to getting promotion. Nil-nil with QPR. Not the most interesting way to do it, but we get the job done. We have been promoted to the championship and there we go fantastic Charlton get their playoff place they're surely going to get the other automatic spot but we are going up automatically once again 1.63 million to spend next season not sure that's going to really cut it in the championship um yeah Tom Field out for a month he's going to miss the rest of the season which is a bit of a shame but the fans are absolutely ecstatic the board cannot believe what has happened Neither can I, to be honest. I mean, let's just get some perspective on this. We started this save two years ago, expected to challenge for relegation in League 2. We got up last season, we nearly chucked it away, and now we've been promoted very easily from League 1. Whether we can replicate that in the Championship remains to be seen. I'm not optimistic, and with that kind of transfer budget, I'm kind of... I'm not going to lie. Um, if we can find another job in the Championship, as painful as it may be to play against Cambridge, we can find another job in the championship then well i'm certainly going to be all ears but you know there might be no one that's interested in us so i'm certainly not going to walk out on cambridge unless i have a definite job available so we're six points clear with 12 points available our goal difference should help quite a lot so two wins is pretty much enough but three would seal it seven points would seal it basically so we can't win the title today while well, charlton played qpr on the Friday night, and they draw with them as well, which means that if we beat Peterborough, then I think, I think we'll actually only need one more point. So we might play three games today just to wrap up the title. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But let's let's play Peterborough first. Let's not count any chickens and see if we can get a result there. So just the one enforced change then due to Tom Field's injury. Norville Williams comes in at left back to replace him, but otherwise no changes. And why would there need to be? So Peterborough United, local rival to Cambridge, of course, and uh, some decent players. George Boyd's still in there. Um, he's getting on a bit, but he's still very solid. Marcus Madison on the right-hand side, and Ivan Tony is the only player challenging Adam Ida for top goal scorer. We can potentially clinch the title here with a win. That's not that's not true. That's complete. That's a complete lie. I'm not going to lie to them. Um, but I'm expecting you to win. Come on, we're at home. This is our uh, penultimate home game of the season. Let's go out there, get the job done, and then we can potentially win the title in the next match early chance for us jordan boone to lloyd jones and they're kind of coming towards us in some sort of uh, some sort of column or or phalanx or something phalanx politic puts it across ida with a fierce shot which pim just about spools round the post corner in from george maris headed away by kent not seen much beyond these two highlights but there's a goal 
There's the goal. We do have quite good corner routines. I didn't do anything with them. It's just the ones that are in the game, but they seem to work quite well with, I guess, with the tactic. I don't know. I don't know, but it, it seems to be okay. Um, Politic gets the ball in, holds it up, puts it across. Tom Adeyemi fires high. Wrong foot's the goalkeeper for his seventh goal of the season just before half time. We've got the lead. 97 points as things stand. I mean, it's not, it's not over yet. It's 45 minutes for us to throw it away, but... That is a very impressive total if we can last out. Obviously, we're, we, we're not going to necessarily, um, especially with when things like that happen. Harrison Burrows knocks it in, heads home, and it's 1-1. Um, it was going so well. Bucketing it down here in Cambridgeshire. Absolutely bucketing it down. Lewis Reed with a simple ball in, simple header. Burrows gets the jump on our defender and well, equaliser for Peterborough. I mean, we, we've got promotion. That's the main thing. Really would quite like to win the title, though. That would be nice. I've not seen much from some of these boys today. George Maris is nervous, not playing well. We'll bring on Josh Ruffles. We'll bring on Marcus Barnes as well for Will Ferry, who's not really done all that much today. I mean, we might as well go attacking because, I mean, why not? The, the most important thing has been done. Let's see if we can nick a goal late on. We cannot. 1-1, one, one, another draw. But it's a point closer to the title, but it is a bit disappointing. We could we could have wrapped it up in the next game, but that's not going to be the case now. So the question is, what do we do now? Because the title is kind of... It really depends on what Charlton do. If Charlton drop points and we gain a couple of points, then we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll seal the deal. But otherwise, it could, just, it could just sort of drag out. I don't want to miss the moment, but then I don't want to sort of commit to say, oh, we're going to do this game or these two games. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to now go forwards... Um, I'm going to play the next uh, next game. We'll keep an eye on what Charlton are doing, and then I will bring you uh, the moment of that if indeed it is a moment that results in us winning the title. And if not, we're just going to go to the next game as well. If it's not done after uh, after the penultimate game of the season, then we will do a new episode to end things off with the Oxford United game. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens in these two games. But they're not going to have their own episode because I don't want to spend too much time on them. We'll just sort of cut to what happens and see if we do indeed go up. So, good start here against Doncaster. Penalty from Adam Ida. He fires home for his 32nd goal of the season. And Charlton are behind against Portsmouth. Well, Charlton are losing 1-0 to Portsmouth. And we're doing all we need to do to capitalise on that. Jordan Boone firing home from a George Maris free kick. 2-0 up. Here at Doncaster, I mean, we just got to see it out. Well, corners come in, and it's a stunning strike from Elijah Dixon Bonner. Gets a bit of fortune with it getting back to him, but great goal. 3-0. This one is completely done, and now all eyes need to focus on what is happening at Fratton Park. Portsmouth still leading by a goal to nil. Time is disappearing. And the full-time whistle's gone, and it's doing this thing. And when it does this thing, you know what that means. It means you've won a trophy. Portsmouth have held on against Charlton, and that's why I didn't want to just. That's why I didn't want to just, you know, maybe skip over this one. I, I was gonna, probably going to skip over this one. Good job that we didn't. Doncaster Rovers nil, Cambridge United three, and most importantly of all, Portsmouth one, Charlton Athletic nil, and with two games to spare. We have not only been promoted, we already knew that, but we have now won the EFL League One title. And there we go. Absolutely fantastic. Completely, completely ridiculous. I'm trying to just sort of pretend that it's just completely normal. Um, yeah, I, I never expected this. Never expected this at all. Absolutely sensational stuff. I mean, to get promoted at all was insane. 30 to 1 preseason odds, it was a bit... It's a bit longer than that, I think. But yeah, everyone is just in disbelief and none more so than me. Absolutely fantastic. Everyone gets a medal. That was sensational. Obviously, we did get promoted last season. That was good, but we didn't win the title. We finished in third. Still good, uh, but you know, promotion is still obviously good. But, you know, it's it's all the more sweeter when you actually win a physical trophy and it means that if we leave Cambridge in the summer which we may well do then we do leave them with two promotions and a trophy a title as well I mean still still not set in stone still not set in stone but we are up to 50% in reputation that is 
That is a pretty massive jump. It's two and a half stars still, but 50% is, is not bad at all. Well, there we are. Fantastic stuff. We could get over 100 points, which is just nuts. I mean, we got we got promoted. We didn't even get promoted in, in, in even in second place. We got promoted in third last season, and we've run away, really, with the League One title. Charlton have also secured automatic promotion as well. well. That was never really in much doubt. It's going to be quite closely fought in the playoffs. There's still not... The places are not all set. I don't think anyone, you know, no one else has secured a playoff place. Wickham, Hull and MK Dons looking good, but it's not done yet. So with all that in mind, there really is absolutely no point in playing AFC Wimbledon whatsoever in an episode. And there's not really much point playing Oxford United on the final day of the season either. We may well do. Maybe, maybe just the goals. I don't know. But we will be back for the... Uh, if, if we don't play the game, we'll be back for the aftermath of that game, all of the sort of end of season stuff. We'll have an end of season review and it may well be an end of club review. We'll have to just sort of see what happens, see what happens in the other leagues, what jobs are available. If there's another opportunity, as I said, in the championship with a side who are sort of better placed to do well in the championship than we will be, which is, I mean, not looking particularly, not looking particularly great with the money that we've got available. I don't think we're going to go down. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that I can keep us up if we do stay but um, I, I, it's going to be a bit of a struggle if there is another opportunity available then I think you know we for our own sake we may well look to move on we have taken Cambridge very very far in a very short amount of time I'm not sure how sustainable that is going to be a lot of the players we've got are on loan a lot of players contracts are expiring and I'm not sure we can necessarily afford to to renew everybody's contracts while extending and improving the squad but I don't want to leave Cambridge in a bad position I mean, they're not in a bad position. Whatever happens, I mean, they're not in a bad position. If we do leave, we'll be leaving them in the championship and we'll be leaving them, even if they get relegated from the championship, they'll have got a lot more money out of it. And there may not be anything available. There may not be anything available and there may not be any jobs uh, where even if they are available, where they're actually interested in even giving us an interview. No one's come to offer us an interview at any point in the save anywhere else. So, it's you know, it's entirely plausible that we will be at Cambridge at the start of next season. And I don't really want to leave them mid-season whatever happens we are leaving Cambridge in a, in a very good place I think actually financially pretty healthy for a club in League One quite a lot of money in the bank and I mean yeah it's been a fantastic fantastic two years which we'll go over in more detail in the next episode at the end of the season but thank you very much for watching leave a like if you have enjoyed our quite unexpected and yet quite brilliant promotion to the championship Make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss that end of season stuff where we will we'll look and see what happens next on the next stage of our career. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.